How do you yeah. combat this for, internally from many of these big tech companies that are now essentially being run by a, a lot of these individuals who might yeah. be classified as part of the woke? And they're the ones, they're the gatekeepers that are essentially the ones who are, you know, creating these policies of, you know what, we're going to deplatform President Donald Trump, but we're not going to deplatform, you know, Taliban. The Taliban. Right. You, yeah. can, you can get kicked off of Twitter for life for misgendering someone. Mm -hmm. And yet you can go online and put Eve's face in a gas chamber and you're fine. Mm -hmm. And no one's going to say anything about it. And in fact, you might trend because people are positively sure. upvoting it. Mm -hmm. That they, is the upside down world that we're living in. Are yeah. these, uh, are places like Twitter, are they becoming more of a publisher or rather than a, a social media? Of course. All of these media? companies are, are publishers. Yeah. Right. I can't. All of them. Of I can't buy an ad on TV and say Johnson & Johnson or whatever. Let me say that again. <laughs> cut, cut out the brand name. I can't, I, can't, um, I can't go on TV and buy an ad that says a certain type of shampoo would make your hair grow. You, they're not going to broadcast that, mm -hmm. right? Why is there truth in advertising on TV and no truth in advertising on social media? This is crazy. Absolutely this needs to be, this needs to be monitored. Ne probably what you're saying is, I mean, obviously, what you're saying is true. So it doesn't, it actually needs to be from Congress, it needs to be, they need to start being accountable to what people say. They, they are publishers. Yeah. I think, I think we could talk for like four hours about just this, about yeah. about just yeah. this question. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think the broader thing we need to think about as a community is not sort of playing whack-a-mole, which mm -hmm. is right now, I think, we're so focused on these fires, these mm -hmm. tweet fires or these Facebook fires that are going to come up and continue to come up every other day. And I think that we are sort of missing the bigger picture mm. if we're focusing on playing whack-a-mole all the time. It's also yep. exhausting. I mean, it's such a distraction and a dream. It's exhausting. Every single mm -hmm. day. Exhausting. Arguably every single day. In fact, it's not even arguably. It's just every fact. Every hour. Every hour of every day, <laughs> there, is another, there is another outrage that we could be combating. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the more that you combat it, the more it comes up again. I mean, whack-a-mole is a perfect analogy and I, yeah and I think a lot of I think we really I don't have the answer to this question but as I'm thinking about you know how to combat anti-semitism I know that the answer is not to send a 22 year old kid who wants to fight on behalf of the Jewish community mm -hmm. in Israel into the digital firing line mm -hmm. have them get ripped apart for six months and then say you know what this isn't worth it we need to think a lot more deeply about what is the best use of people's times and, and how are we going to sort of fight anti-Semitism in a way that actually nurtures yeah. us as people yeah. mm -hmm. and nurtures us as a community? Mm -hmm. And right now, a lot of times what I'm seeing is a kind of defensive, reactionary posture. And I think we need to fundamentally rethink that. Mm -hmm. We need to fundamentally re-sort of orient ourselves toward a version of fighting anti-Semitism mm -hmm. that actually has a lot more to do with nurturing our Judaism, nurturing our Jewish community, and nurturing our Zionism. I'm yeah. curious yeah. what you think about this kind of modern day anti-Semite and how they're different because I, you know, when you look in the past, I think most people, if they had a racist thought or an anti-Semitic, you know, perspective, they probably held that kind of close to their chest. But now these days, yeah, it wasn't it's, fashionable. No, it wasn't fashionable. Literally, like ten right. years, ten years ago, it was yeah. like not not a fashionable thing to do. And then and, all yeah. of a sudden, and now everyone yeah. just basically they're showing you their cards, what you're what you're working with. And I feel like these social media sites are acting as this vector for these individuals to to now say, oh, listen, they're talking about it now. Now I can actually tell the people, they'll tell the world what I think about the Jews. Uh, so I, I'm curious, you know, how are these social media sites emboldening this new wave of anti-Semitism and, and individuals who might have been shy 10 years ago to talk about this, but now it's like, it's, it's game on. Well, it's become part of this um, umbrella of humanitarian causes that, you know, people proudly uh, wear as a badge and it's it's part of the the menu so to speak you know this idea of anti-zionism that is really just thinly veiled anti-semitism and we can't have we can't seem to have the conversation in the same space because we've been pushed out of the progressive spaces in which this conversation is being had and is being had without challenge you know there's no there's no appealing to critical reasoning behind it there's no mm -hmm. there's no appealing to anything other than emotion it's all emotion rooted and emotion based isn't that what the tech companies are also trying to tap into Absolutely. i mean that's what they're that's what these algorithms are doing they're they're feeding 
you know, for someone who might not have thought about this all the time, now all of a sudden their newsfeed is being flooded yeah. with these uh, with these images. And even if you just think about the capacity to even speak on these platforms, it favors emotional responses over long mm -hmm. logical arguments mm -hmm. because you know you only have a certain amount of characters in a tweet, and nobody wants to read a thread of twenty five tweets that's actually you know debunking the myths and explaining something rationally. It's a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. It's so much less work, and it's far easier to just adopt a cause and scream about it and think that you're morally superior because you're doing so and then you get the validation and you feed off it and mm -hmm. you get the likes and that's what people are that's what people are engaged in on social media they're engaged in self-validation you don't get self-validation mm -hmm. from from adopting a cause where you know you're going to trend for all the wrong reasons mm -hmm. and be severely hated and castrated across the internet mm -hmm. so it's almost like a digital drug that people are getting addicted oh, to oh it's not almost we know that yeah. this mm -hmm. is how they work with brain scientists they work with our amygdala there this is you know i, I yeah. hope there's going to be a backlash and the pendulum would go to the other direction when people are be like oh my god we mm -hmm. are you know we are the product and everything that's you know it's in the conversation right now so obviously and again the hatred hate, any kind of any form of hate is the thing that lights you up, makes mm -hmm. your, you know, your, your, like you've got wiring and your wiring in the brain and mm -hmm. you've got your chemical flooding your, flooding your body. We all know this on a personal level. That's what's happening and the Jews are just, <laughs> we're always there to take the, uh, it also, Take the blame. I, and this goes to a bigger conversation about social media and our literally our brain and how we're rewiring as a society all across, mm -hmm. all across the planet right now. I, I just want to pick up on this sort of like clarity with which Eve said, this is like core to the ideology. Yeah. That being, that one way, excuse me, <clears throat> sorry guys, I've been talking a lot recently, that one way to signal that you are part of the sort of the community of the righteous, mm -hmm. that you're part of the community of concern, is literally by expressing your hatred of Israel. It's, not, it's, it's almost that it's beyond fashionable. It's that it is sort of necessary. Badge and of honor. It's, yes, it's something that is worn as a badge of honor. Now the question is, how did we get mm. from sort of, as Noel was saying, like essentially five minutes ago historically, mm -hmm. this wow. was something that, maybe 20 years, this mm -hmm. was something that was like deeply shameful. And that is a much, I think, deeper question, is how did we go from there to, to the here. position that we're in now? Mm -hmm. Well, there's an answer for that. There, I, you know, this is my life work. <laughs> so um, the, 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 how we got here, so what's happening on social media is just the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. of a well-funded political campaign that has been waged against Israel in the past 20 years. Mm -hmm. So this is not by accident. It's, it, this happened by design. So the language, as you were talking about Soviet Union propaganda, the language to everything that we're seeing right now originated in the Durban Conference Against Racism in 2001, mm -hmm. which was so anti-Semitic that the U.S. and Israel pulled out of it. This is where they actually crafted the whole concept and of Canada. Israel as an apartheid state because mm -hmm. The enemies of Israel tried to destroy her at first with wars, with other militaries. Didn't work out. Then with terrorism. That also didn't work out. And then they're like, aha, here's what we're going to do. We're going to actually delegitimize the existence of Israel in the world with a slow, what I call in the book, a slow-moving terrorist attack. Mm -hmm. And that's what's been happening. They've been putting a lot of money, a lot of effort, and a lot of groundwork in going to all these social justice causes, mm -hmm. going to Black Lives Matter, going to the Women's March, going to like gay and lesbian like marches in San Francisco, going to unions, port unions, and actually slowly change their, changing their minds and poisoning them basically with yeah. fake, f with, with lies to actually make that shift against Israel. These are nefarious powers and nefarious countries that want to dismantle the Jewish state, period, end of story. And they have succeeded beyond their wildest dreams. And they're doing so it successfully. What I, they're doing it very successfully, but we've been trying to warn about this for years. Like I've, in my book, there's, there's actually a, subchapter that's called this new hip social justice cause mm -hmm. and the book came out before the conflict and I'm like you guys this is what's happening they've already turned the ship around and you know they, and, and they basically I, did a very good job. So the thing for us to understand is this is not going to get solved by tweets. This is not going to get solved by Hollywood. I get a lot of people calling me and like being like let's get this and that star to tweet about Israel and I'm like it's not going to help. <laughs> This, this is going to be a long work, thorough work that we need to actually have a very like deep thinking on, as to how we approach this. Mm -hmm. And we need to understand that we're at a war. We've been at a war for 20 years. One side has been at a war. The other side has been asleep. Mm -hmm. That's us. Yeah. They've no, been actually actively working 
to, to dismantle us. Mm -hmm. And we've been la-di-da-di-da. So if one thing happened in the past few months since the conflict that I'm thrilled about is that the community woke up.